Hi, I'm Sean Rowland from the Research Council's UK Global Challenges Research Fund team and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the practicalities for the Interdisciplinary Research Hubs call. So this is going to describe the scope of the call itself and a few details about how to apply and the assessment process. So to give a brief overview up front, this call is looking for challenge-led and impact-focused proposals, which are established and led by UK research organisations, but are very much in partnership with others, including those in the Global South. To give a rough idea, we're looking to invest in between 12 and 15 hubs, and each should be between eight and 20 million pounds full economic cost over five years. You can also see here a very brief summary of the timetable, the most important aspects at the moment are the deadline for intention to submit, which is a mandatory step, and those for outline applications submitted through our JES system. So each of these hubs needs to be focused around an intractable challenge or challenges. And by this, what we really mean is multidisciplinary and complex challenges, which preferably cut across sustainable development goals and are those sorts of challenges which are both resistant to change and prone to fragmented responses. And as a result of this, these challenges can't typically be solved by a single organisation, sector or discipline approach. So in order to tackle these challenges, we require researchers and their partners to have a capacity to think across, between as well as within these sustainable development goals and have a clear understanding and clearly articulate how different disciplines can contribute to addressing the challenges. It's also important that there's an awareness of underlying factors and contexts, in particular thinking about the interactions and the interrelatedness between the different challenges. So what does a hub look like? For those of you who are more familiar with the call, you'll notice that there's not a very specific structure imposed for a hub. This is intentional to allow flexibility for you to propose an approach and design which is most appropriate for your chosen challenges and the local context. However, it is important that each hub focuses on and delivers against these key characteristics. These are around challenge and impact focus, interdisciplinary research excellence, global partnerships, and organisation and leadership. If you'd like to hear a bit more about these key characteristics, you can find a separate video about these. In terms of eligibility for this call, we have updated our call text. So if you looked at this close to the launch of the call, I would advise that you have another look. In summary though, the principal investigator or hub director should be the same individual and employed by the lead organisation. This lead organisation needs to be eligible to receive RCUK funding and can, for this specific call, include UK public sector research establishments. However, in this case, there is a requirement to contact the office in advance. In addition to the lead organisation, there are three key ways that partners can engage in this call. Firstly, as a research partner organisation. This can be a UK or international research organisation and must demonstrate that they can meet the following three criteria. An ability to deliver research, both in terms of capacity and capability, sufficient governance and control, and the required level of financial stability. More information on the minimum criteria for each of these characteristics can be found in our call text document. Individuals who are staff at these research partner organisations are eligible to be included in the application as co-investigators. But please note that these individuals should have significant intellectual input to the programme and be involved in its leadership and management. The second way to engage is as a project partner, and this essentially is any organisation which doesn't meet the minimum criteria mentioned for research partner organisations. 
And thirdly, your partners can be included as subcontractors. However, this can only be used for the procurement of goods and services. So in terms of the funding available, again, there's been an update to the context with further guidance. So please check this out if you haven't already. For research partner organisations, the costs that will be awarded by RCUK are dependent on the location of the organisation. UK organisations can receive 80% of their direct and indirect costs in line with current FEC policy. For developed countries and those who are due to graduate from the DAC list prior to the start of the hubs, will be awarded at up to 50% of their eligible direct costs. And for those in DAC list countries, up to 100% of the eligible direct costs will be awarded, plus in addition to support the infrastructure and capacity in that country, we will also award up to 30% of those eligible direct costs as indirect costs. For those universities that have campuses in multiple countries, costs will be awarded based on where the campus is legally registered. And for multinational organisations, costs are awarded dependent on the location of the headquarters. For project partners, each organisation may request up to one FTE of staff time. Please note more staff from each project partner could be incorporated in the proposal, however RCUK would only award costs for one FTE. The total across all project partner costs may not exceed 10% of the total cost of the hub. However, RCUK will award up to 100% of the costs requested for each partner. In terms of the subcontracts, Costs are awarded based on the country managing the subcontract and for that we use the same proportions for the research partner organisations. To note there are some ineligible costs for this call. Again, these aspects can be incorporated in the proposal but the costs will not be awarded by RCUK. So how to apply for this call? Firstly, I'd just like to bring to your attention that there is a naming convention for each hub. It needs to have a name which is short and comprehensible to a lay intelligent audience, and in particular doesn't include any acronyms, jargon, technical terms, or the names of people and organisations. So the first step is the intention to submit. This is a mandatory step for all applicants wishing to submit an outline application. This comprises a short online survey which comprises details of the principal investigator as well as a summary of the proposal itself. The deadline for this stage is the 29th of September and you can find a link to the survey here. Following this, outline proposals should be submitted through the JES system. In addition to the proposal form generated on the system, applications should include a case of support, including these three sections noted here, and a CV for the PI and hub director only at this stage. The deadline for this step is the 9th of November. To give you an idea of the assessment process that will be used for this call, you can see here a summary of the key stages. Outline proposals will go through a number of internal office checks before being assessed by an expert panel. Some outline proposals will then be invited to submit to the full stage of this call. These form proposals will also go through a series of office checks before being sent for external peer review and going through another assessment panel process. Finally, some of these full applicants will be invited to the interview stage and this interview panel will form the final stage in the assessment process. Each of these panels is designed to include a broad representation of disciplines as well as individuals who have a track record in interdisciplinary working and approaches. 
Both academic and non-academic representation will be included from DACLIS where these challenges are faced. And we will also include a number of users and other stakeholders who have an ability to assess the likelihood of impact from each proposal. So at the outline stage, we will only be assessing some of the aspects of the proposed hubs. More information about the sub-criteria under each of these high-level categories is included in the call text document. But generally speaking, at outline stage, what we're looking to assess is the concept, the articulation of the challenge and the research need, and the team in its most broadest sense. At the full stage, a number of additional criteria will be included. In particular, including strategic rationale, more information about the capacity and capability of the teams and partnerships, looking at the leadership and management and the organisation monitoring and evaluation in more detail, and considering the value for money. It's important to note that within this, we're looking for a clear justification that the size and scale of the proposal is in line with the size and scale of the challenge identified. So you can see here a more detailed outline of the key dates for these stages. Thank you for watching this video. If you'd like some more information about GCRF, please check out the other videos or look at our website for more information.